Okay, you ready? Yep. Hello out there. Welcome to our podcast this week with the brand and the source. This is Coach EJ, the brand. And Coach Aaron, the source. Aaron, I was having a conversation with um, another coach, a couple coaches, actually. I, this has been coming up about two or three weeks. And, so, and it's about player development and winning. And what does that really mean? I think player development is about winning. And we, we lose that in translation. So I want to get, you know, our side you know, our side of the story from a training uh, standpoint and from a player development standpoint in terms of teams and individuals. So, you know, what's your, what's your angle on this, man? Yeah. I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier and, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. Um, you know, and you had talked about the, you know, the goal is to win. And right. that is, that's the goal in sports. You know, that's the ultimate is we're trying to win. And, and, but the other side of the coin, and again, maybe because I'm a trainer is player development and progressing again and getting better is also winning. Mm. And, you know, you can't always measure the, you know, the success of an athlete just by its wins and losses by an athlete's wins and losses. Right. You know, track and field is a perfect example. You're only going to have one winner. You know, you got eight people in a race, you got right. one winner, you know, you got second and third and, you know, that sort of thing. But um, you can be in a race and you can run, you can be in fifth place. But if you set a personal best, isn't that winning? <laughs> you know, <It> is. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I think it gets, you know, it gets conflated with a whole bunch of other things and, and, and images and stuff, but I, and maybe it's because I come from a track background and we have to have that perspective mm -hmm. um, versus just an ultimate score team score, you know, this group versus right. that group. But, you know, to me, when I played baseball, if I went three for three, yeah, we might've got blown out 10 Oh, but <laughs> I, I won. Right. You know, in a sense. So Again, I just have a different perspective, but I think we should talk about both sides because, you know, you had made a, a good point about, you know, the pursuit of winning. And I want you to go ahead and, and right. stress that and articulate that. And, um, you know, I'll go on that other side from my perspective. Yeah, it's definitely a two sided coin and they both need to work together from an individual standpoint and from the team standpoint. Be, and we need to, and, and players, athletes, parents who are listening, you need to understand, you know, they work together and they need to, to all, always coexist together. So the side I'm coming from, Aaron, is the side of you have um, a team and players are trying to develop in your system. Let's use baseball as an example or even football. Or, or any team sport basketball. And there are individual goals within your team and during the game. One, as a game, you have this personal individual battle between the pitcher and the batter going at each other. That's called competing, competing to win because the end all is get on base score, run for the team so we can win the game. But within that battle, there's that player development of, you know, what did you do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get ready for that game on Saturday uh, with your swing or that competition level that you have with that pitcher? What were some of the goals you were trying to accomplish that week to um, have a, a win or a result that could be really good? So I like to come from the side of, you know, player development is, is important and you have that that goal of getting to your 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 purpose, but you're trying to also help your team win a game, and that's called competing. And I think competing gets lost in player development because everybody's just thinking about just their own individual thing, and they forget about the goal of the win for the team and trying to compete. Because I think competition is important in, in, in player development as, as, as well as the win. Now you can talk about that, that point of 
of that individual personal best, which I think is, is critical too, because both have to, like I said earlier, have to coexist. But I think a lot of athletes these days, Aaron, and it, you can help me with this too, is people forget how to win and compete in competition. And that is part of player development not only just the training side of it and right but they lose the sight of that that training was to teach you how to compete right. and to win and so i'm coming from you know very similar cloth than you are but i just don't see it a lot in this generation of them understanding what competition is and you know us talking to i guess we had on a uh, podcast some time ago we talked about you know competing you know, and, and doing that. So that's kind of my viewpoint a little bit on it, Aaron, a little bit. I have more to talk about with, with you about this, but that's kind of my initial thought. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was shooty that we were talking, shooty Babbitt that we were talking uh-huh. about um, the, the competitiveness, right? And because he's also, a, he's, he's, a, he's a scout. Right. And, and, you know, we talked about basically, you know, what are the things that he looks for and he's talking about, hey, I'm looking for a guy who's trying to get it done and who's competitive. And, and, and I agree as a coach, you know, former coach myself, that's right. really what I'm looking at. In essence, if there's one quality I'm looking at for, for an athlete that I'm going to take, it's that first. Okay. That first and foremost. Then the athleticism, then the technical skills, then the sport IQ. Wow. Um, but. Okay. But, you know, again, from, you know, having my trainer's hat on mm-hmm. and, and, and seeing, you know, this industry grow the last 25 years and, you know, where it was just first kids playing sports to now the mm-hmm. business <laughs> and, and, and the proliferation of, of people like me and travel teams and kind of all these organized businesses that are in, you know, athletics. Um, I do think that that has gotten lost because with especially now with analytics right you know you you almost in a lot of cases you take the competitiveness out of the training sometimes because these kids are so caught up in some of these processes you know and in these analytical results they forget just how to compete you know, in practice and how to apply that, you know, well, I talk about, you know, today when I have kids coming, I say, hey, you know what, today we're eating red meat. And basically what that means is, you know, we're just going after it. I'm not worried about, you know, the technical aspects of everything. I just want you to get used to going after it. And, you know, it's, it's funny because you can go day after day after day in this whole process of just executing these these drills and these techniques. Okay. But like I said, if you don't pepper in some of that competitive aspect, whether it's just saying, hey guys, you know, we're trying to do this in this time today, or maybe a, as a team sport, you're setting up some versus sorts mm-hmm. of uh, scenarios. Right. You know, the only time they really get to compete is game time. Well, if you have some kids who don't real who can't really or Tap, don't have that or can't really tap into that that's that's the only time they really get to experience it or try to experience it well by then it's too late you know i always you know have an analogy it's like well well okay if you go one for three in a baseball game you only get to run the first base once you know well you, you know in essence you know what I'm saying? especially if you're striking yeah. out right um so yeah, that opportunity only come up once, but you still have to keep practicing running so that when that one opportunity comes up, you're ready. Right. And maybe that's not the greatest analogy, but what I'm oh. saying is there has to be interwoven into the things that you do, that competitive nature, that competitive spirit, that mano a mano, that ver- what well, I call verses. You know, we that's what I do in my gym. Right. And, you know, I have I call okay verses. And then I'm taking two guys and they're doing a drill against each other. Right. Um, but, you know, I think it's just the way things have gone. You know, again, you know, maybe there's too much information and maybe there's too much coaching. And, you know, again, maybe just to look back 
as a kid, I mean, I've always been competitive, but maybe that stems from the neighborhood games that we played. And, and with the absence of those neighborhood games, well, maybe that's where we got that aspect of it. Because maybe we're playing with kids that, you know, older kids that used to, you know, talk mess on you and tease you. And, you know, you know exactly. there's a whole dynamic that goes on when you grow up in a neighborhood of, yeah. you know, 10, 11 kids and, and you're all playing different sports and, and that sort of thing. Maybe that's what's missing from these kids. And that's where they have, you know, they don't get to foster uh, that skill set. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's three things I want to point out that you, you mentioned, and it just kind of rung a bell for me. One was that when you said going one for three and running to first base, you know, that's practicing running, you know, that's such a, I mean, running's part of the game of any sport that has anything to do with those type of things outside of swimming, obviously you're in a pool. But what I'm saying is this, is that if a guy gets a base hit, okay, say like it's a base hit to left field and he's practicing his turn and hitting the inside corner of the bag and making a big turn, that's part of that training to run, practicing the proper running form. What if he hit a ground ball to shortstop and he's trying to beat it out? And in his training, he's working on his sprinting. Is he sprinting correctly down the line? So Though he may be out, he's still competing and running down that line, working on something instead of saying, oh, I hit a ground ball. Let me just kind of jog down the first. Right, day. right. You know? And the second point that led me to, to this is that versus against versus, you know, versus, versus, versus competition and training. Because, um, you know, you're in practice and you're, I find we're playing more scrimmages just to teach guys how to compete in a yeah. game type setting. And we're doing more of that. So the pitchers get used to in the batters, the batters get used to facing pitching. The defense gets used to seeing the runners out there running around causing chaotic situations. And then also the base runners being more aggressive and seeing what they can do that. Con when you said that, that versus scenario, I was like, wow, you know, this rings a bell for me. It hits that thing of competition. And that's, you know, and that's in the practice setting. That's part of that player development, right? That training. But you can, you said these so, so nicely about that versus scenario. I love that. Um, and saying that. And then the third thing is just understanding, you know, and, and you make those points is that, you know, I tell parents out there, listen, these are good things. You know, player development is not just like having good training or good right. coaching. That, that's part of the equation. You put it in a pie scenario. You've got coaching, training, mental mindset. You've got competition, learning how to compete. And then you've got this, this, this you know, in-game scrimmaging. Then you've got the game. That's all of that is encompassing player development and winning strategies for your young athlete right you know no, i agree i agree um i don't know if i have much more to add to that <laughs> you know again i just think um you you want to make sure your your kid is getting into some scenarios where they're you know they're they're getting competitive it's not don't wait just for game time and, you know, if they're not getting it through some of their training, well, maybe you need to start to work on certain things, you know, at home, you know, hey, okay, you're going to cat, we're going to throw, you know, I'm going to hit you so many ground balls, and you got to catch, you know, X amount of them, you know what I'm saying, whatever it takes to, to get your juices flowing, it's hard for me, because I mean, my switch comes on real easy, you know what I'm saying, so both of us, both of us. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know, so for me, it, it's not a far leap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we can totally check, it, man. We getting after it. Hey, I got a border collie who every time I want to go up the stairs, she tries to beat me up the stairs. <laughs> and every time I see her get up next to me, my switch goes on. I'm like, 
you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to get up the stairs before me? I don't know, something maybe innate in her as a dog and a herder, you know, that sort of thing. But right. uh, my switch is real easy to flip. So um, <laughs> it's, it's hard uh, for, um, for me to really say anything more than what I've said. But again, parents, try and figure out what, you, what environment you can create. And, and I guess maybe I'll, I'll end with this is I, I think there's been, you know, not a movement, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's been a shift in, in athletics, or at least in the training and raising kids, that competition is not, is not good. You know, everyone can win, you know, that sort of thing. Mentality. We've kind of grown, you know, we're, we're from a different era and we've kind of right. you know, seen that come about. And, and I think that's kind of tempered the competitiveness in athletes because, no, it's not the ultimate. No, it's not the only thing, uh, but it's still important. And, and, and generally, when we're talking about elite level athletics, it, you are competing to win. Right. There's no bones about it. And, and yes, you can have those individual victories and wins inside that. But ultimately, you need to understand that, you know, sports at the highest level are a business and, you know, it's it's about winning you know so as i just think if you keep winning in perspective and and um you know in you comp you in competition in perspective but you're able to go out and give it your all win or lose and and understand that hey well you know i had some personal wins or personal victories during this loss um but I still want to win. And that still helps to spurn you to, to be competitive and be better Then I, I think that's where we need to fall. But, you know, the whole kind of, well, you know, everyone gets a medal and, you know, right. everyone has a value and yeah, I get it. But, you know, again, I'm just kind of a realist in the sense that, you know, in the end, it's what's on the scoreboard. <laughs> it is. And who crosses the tape first? I like the balance that you left everyone with today, Aaron, about that, putting winning in a, a perspective and how you closed it out. It's, that's beautiful, man. So with that said, glad you could join us today. Glad you could listen to one of our, our, our mini podcasts and talking about player development and winning today. This is Coach EJ, the brand. And this is Coach Aaron, the source. Everybody, we've got a great series coming up. Uh, we're going to release it pretty soon, maybe by the end of the year. Stay tuned for it. It's called Champions Are Built. Uh, it's a great series. We're talking to people in the sports industry, uh, famous athletes of, of past eras, this era, uh, personalities, people behind the scenes. It's going to be a great series. You guys stay tuned for it. We'll see, see you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>